7 Misconceptions About the Antichrist, the Beast and the Coming of the Lord Perhaps the biggest misconception right now is that the beast will inject you with something that will change your DNA and control you. Now, this is taken from Revelation chapter 13 and in verse 16 it says the Antichrist causes all to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads and that no man will be able to buy or sell except they have the mark of the beast or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, can you see it says the mark? The Greek word for that mark where the root word, where that uh, uh, mark is taken from, is called charagma, which means a stamp, some kind of insignia, you know, that shows a person belongs to a particular group or, or an organization. It can also mean a cow belongs to a particular farm. It's a brand, a logo. Now, the logo itself is not evil. It's what's behind that logo that is actually evil. So it shows you belong to someone, like a wedding ring. Now, rings are not evil, but when you see a wedding ring, you assume that person is married, it committed to someone. Now, here in Sweden, it is true that currently just under 10,000 people have inserted a microchip in their hands. Now, why? Microchips implanted into one's body are supposed to make daily life convenient. They open up a perspective to replace traditional keys, credit cards, IDs, passports, eventually, and even train tickets with a microchip. Now, are these microchips evil? Do they somehow pollute you just because you've accepted them? No. But well, let's think about it. If Hitler tells you to accept them as a way to show you are a Nazi, then of course, you will probably reject it. Most people would say no, right? If there was some kind of dictator who was evil and he made a bargain with you to accept it, and if Hitler was somehow to come back, you wouldn't obviously accept it because that's a mark that you belong to an evil, corrupt organization. Now, Hitler did have his own signs, and in his days, you had to raise your hand and say, Hi, Hitler. Hail, Hitler. He'll ask you for a sign to show you worship him. And that's what that scripture is saying. The sign doesn't is in itself. The actual sign is not bad, but it's confirmation that you belong to the Antichrist. And when God sees you accept that, on behalf of the Antichrist, that means you belong to him and not God. You're committing yourself. It's a sort of mark to show that you are sold to the devil. Now, if he was injected in you to change your DNA, the Bible wouldn't have said it was a sign. And to show that people had not lost their sense of right or wrong, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 30, and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and glory is when he returns with the saints to come and judge the earth. Now, people regretted pledging allegiance to the beast in that scripture that I just read. So you can see that people still had some sort of soul. They still had minds. Now, they regretted that decision that they had pledged themselves with those marks to the beast. So when Jesus Christ came, now, if they were somehow controlled by DNA, they wouldn't be able to do that. Revelation chapter 13 verse 4 and verse 8 says, all And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. The evil is not accepting the sign. The evil is worshipping the beast and accepting its terms. Romans 8 verse 9 says, Having hold the Holy Spirit is the sign that we belong to Jesus, that you are a Christian, the sign that you belong to the dragon, Satan, which gave it the power, gave the beast the power, is that the final nail in the coffin that you are sold out is the sign. That is the sign. So just as the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, you know, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not of God. That is the sign that you belong to Christ. Now, on the other hand, the sign in those times that you actually belong to the devil is taking the mark of the beast. So it's very important that you understand that even in the time of the Antichrist, the mark of the beast is a sign. It's a commitment from you to say, I'm giving over myself to the devil. That mark itself does not control you, but it's the fact that you're doing it with the wrong motives. You're selling yourself out. And if you read Revelation chapter 13 very well, everyone worshipped the beast. They followed the beast. And they also worshipped the dragon or worshipped the beast. Who The dragon gave the beast the power. And people worship the dragon and also worship the beast. It's right there in Revelation chapter 13. So it's not the mark that made people evil. It's the fact that they committed themselves to the devil. But some of you will still say things like a serial number is on an injection and you can't work without being injected right now so we must be in the time of the Antichrist. Well, Jesus was categorically clear 
It is not what goes inside a man that can defile him, but what comes out of him. Was Jesus lying? Can a person be defiled by eating or drinking? Now, Apostle Paul said, the only sin that defiles the body is sexual immorality. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 says, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins, all other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. It causes your body to lose its natural affection for your spouse. You know, and people who sleep around, they find it harder to keep a marriage, to be able to stay in a commitment. Somehow it causes your sin, your flesh, to be defiled. And it's the only sin of all sins, all kinds of sexual immorality, whatever you need, I'm sure you can use your own imagination. They all constitute a, a, a sin of the flesh. It's not just a spirit, a, a soul's uh, sin, but it's also a flesh spirit, uh, a flesh sin as well. So if you really want to be able to um, keep your feelings and, uh, and save it that way, then save, save yourself for the special love of your life. You know, there are plenty of sins, and I agree love is the greatest commandment, but only one sin harms your body as well as your soul, and that's sexual sins. The other, the other sins, they harm your soul. Now, remember the scripture says, the soul that sins, continues to willfully sin, will spiritually die. Sexual sins bring a death to your body. It's easy to fall in love, but you will find it hard to stay in love. That's why divorce all around the world is on an all-time high. Because people these days just, you know, they don't really commit sexual, sexual sins, all kinds of sexual sins, whether it's pornography, whether it's adultery, whether it's fornication, bestiality, just so many of them. Lack of commitment, cheating, the whole thing. The Bible says it's, it harms your body. Just save it for someone whom you actually love, someone you want to be with. That's, that was the whole intended purpose of sex. It wasn't just to just use it like an animal, but it was for commitment within the context of a committed relationship. You know, Apostle Paul said the kingdom of God is not based on meat or drink. Nothing you eat or drink or inject can take away your salvation. Jesus Christ said it. It is not what goes inside of a man that can defile him. Jesus said it. I'm not the one saying it. You know, I saw you texted me and called me devils and called me a demon for saying this truth. But it is the truth. It is not what you inject that will defile you. It is the Bible. And the Bible says the mark of the beast is a sign. It's a sign. The sign itself is not evil. The Apple's logos and all these companies' logos are not evil. But when you commit to that company, when you walk, imagine walking around with a stamp to say, you know, I belong to a company. That's exactly what it will be like. The Antichrist is actually... Some of you actually don't actually understand what the Antichrist is actually coming to do. Let me actually break it down. The Antichrist, Jesus Christ is supposed to take over from the Antichrist. The Antichrist is supposed to take over from the whole international consolidation. So companies, governments, everything will form the one world government. Why? So that the Antichrist can take over. And who is Christ coming to take over from? Christ will take over from the Antichrist. So. I understand that some of you have these negative thoughts towards the Antichrist, but it is actually the Antichrist that prepares the way for Christ's coming. And now the scripture speaks about where Christ will rule along with the saints. Now how do you think all that consolidation of power all around the world will happen? It is the Antichrist that would actually spearhead that. You know, now the rapture hasn't happened yet, and this is very important because the Bible speaks about the Antichrist after the rapture during the marriage supper. And I'm going to explain that as well. Now, the rapture hasn't happened yet and the Antichrist is not revealed. So no one can even offer you some kind of worship of the Antichrist or signs to show you have pledged your allegiance to Satan or the beast. It's just not possible because the rapture hasn't happened. So whatever you think it is that people are injecting into themselves, that is not the mark of the beast. First of all, it's not a mark and nothing that you put inside of you, whether it's food or drink, can defile you. Jesus said it, Apostle Paul said it, Apostle Paul even went so fast to say he can even eat meat sacrificed to idols. He will just bless it with thanksgiving and, and that will be it. So when you're speaking about spiritually, to be spiritually defiled, listen, nothing you inject inside of you can defile you. It's Jesus, he's the creator, he's, he's God, he's saying that. 
Now, there's so much, you know, all sorts of uh, superstitions and uh, conspiracies out there. But the honest truth is we must stick to the Bible. You know, it's either we believe what's out there or we believe the Bible. Now, I'm not preaching myself. I'm speaking the word of God. Now, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12 says, If any man worships the beast and his image and receives his mark in his forehand as a confirmation or a forehead or in his hand, that person is accepting the blasphemy against God's name. Why? Because the beast, the primary primary thing that the beast comes to do is to blaspheme. When you read through the scripture, he blasphemes God's name. Now, it's not Jehovah, Nisi, or the name of God are three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I've said it in lots of different messages. Jesus Christ said it in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Now, a lot of, there's somewhere in the scriptures, I believe it's in 1 John chapter 2 and also 1 John chapter 4, where the Bible, uh, um, uh, Apostle John, one of the disciples of Jesus said, anyone who does not believe in the Father and the Son has the spirit of the Antichrist. You're not calling it the Antichrist, but it says it has the spirit and said, some of you are actually in the church already. The spirit already works. And you can see a lot of men of God that say things like God is one. I mean, the scripture says in the Old Testament that the Lord your God is one. Why? Because each one of them have their different dispensations. In the Old Testament, it was the dispensation of the Father. One, the God the Father spoke on behalf of all three. In the New Testament, Jesus was called Lord, and even God came down and said to the disciples and to Moses and also to Elijah that this is my son, hear ye him. The father wasn't going around speaking. He was only confirming the son. He was handing over to say, this is the son. This is the guy I've been talking about. This is my son. This is God. He's here. He's come as a human being. The Bible says he's a child of the Holy Ghost. Mary was a surrogate. Jesus is the son of God. He's eternal. And then when Jesus Christ came, he kept saying, hey, listen, unless I go, I cannot send the Holy Spirit. So again, you see there was some sort of a, 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 another torch being passed on of the Lordship. And that's why in 1 Corinthians 2, I believe it says, the Spirit of this, um, it says, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit is, there's liberty. So you see now the, the Lord is now the Holy Spirit. So the God is always one, always the Lord, always operates as one at a time. Right now, the Holy Spirit is Lord. If you're not, and that's why I said, if you don't have the, the scripture actually says, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not of Christ. In the Old Testament, if you didn't have the Father, you were not of God. In the, in, in the Gospels, if you didn't know who Jesus was, you were not, you were nothing. All the, the Bible says he fulfilled the entire law. In his time, Father said, listen, in the presence of Moses and Elijah, he said, this is my son, hear ye him. Hear ye him. So things have changed. You know, it's no longer God the Father or God the Son who's Lord. It's the Holy Spirit. And the Antichrist comes to blaspheme the name of God. And so you will see all kinds of things. And when you hear people saying, I believe in God the Father, I believe God, but I don't believe Jesus is the son. It's, it's an antichrist spirit. That's a blasphemous thing. They blaspheme and that's what you hear even in the church. People somehow say God is three different manifestations. It's not the scripture. The Bible wouldn't say he's a child of the Holy Ghost. It's either, he either is or he's not. The Bible wouldn't say he's the son of the father. And go and read 1 John chapter 2 and 1 John chapter 4. four. It kept going over and over saying, listen, the antichrist spirit will say that God is one. The scripture even says you believe that God is one. Yes, good for you. Even devils believe the same thing. Demons believe. You see, look at all the world religions. The only thing that separates Christianity from everybody else's religion is the fact that people do not believe Jesus Christ is God. They do not believe in his divinity. You see that even in all these factions of Christianity that not really Christian, but they had their some, they read the Bible, but they rejected Christ is usually his divinity. They do not believe he's the son of God. Now, that's what it means to blaspheme God's name. And that's why Jesus even said, listen, if you blaspheme against my name, I will forgive you. If you blaspheme against the Father, I will, but if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, 
which shows that even the Holy Spirit has not even been revealed, the name of the Holy Spirit. And you need to go and listen to some of my messages, some of Katrina's messages, where he speaks about the name of the Holy Spirit, reveals the identity. The first time that was really, really mentioned, you see that is when the angel said to Mary, a child of the Holy Ghost. Now, clearly, we know God is also a parent of, of, of Christ, but how can Jesus also, the Son of God, also be a child of the Holy Spirit? Now, unless you're saying God is gay, you know, to men, which is not right, which is not true. So, of course, the identity of the Holy Spirit is actually female. And be very careful while you're listening to this message that you do not blaspheme. And that's why Adam said it. He said, you know, um, she is the mother of all living. Eve wasn't even, you know, Eve didn't have any children back then. Adam named Eve based on the Holy Spirit. She is the mother, because she, who is the she in there? It's a feminine. And now, God was, man was made in God's image. And man, Adam, had Eve within him. So obviously, the father also has the Holy Spirit, who's feminine inside of him. God has a feminine side, the Holy Spirit, just as Adam had a feminine side within him, because we're made in God's image. So it's the same thing. Now, obviously, God hides this. God has been hiding this. Just as in the Old Testament, God hid the Son because he didn't want people to blast. People didn't really, he never really set it out. It was always hidden. Even now, a lot of times, you see, even the Holy Spirit is hidden. We don't really know who the Holy Spirit is. But because the times are actually coming to an end now, the Lord is actually revealing this now. And that's the reason why me and Katrina and other prophets are actually revealing the identity of the Holy Spirit. Because her name has to be revealed. Okay? A second huge misconception right now that's going on in the body is that the Antichrist is at work right now. 